Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to a lesson on how to show a shortage in a particular soup, that is a shortage as in a, a singleton or a void, uh, when you actually have a trump fit with your partner in another soup. So there's uh, various reasons that we do this. One of them is to, to the explore how high we can bid on the hand. So explore what the um, potential is on each hand, but also to make that exploration a bit more uh, a bit more accurate. Because what's happened is that when we have a trump fit and you don't have any system available, simply we count our high card points and we add our shortage points. And it doesn't matter where that shortage is. And then we spit out an answer in the end. And this is what we call our total points. Now, shortages are good, yes, but the problem with shortages is often the location of that shortage. If you can imagine a shortage opposite an ace is wonderful, but a shortage opposite a king, a queen, and a jack in that suit in partner's hand could be completely useless. In fact, suddenly those high card points the partner's got in that suit don't uh, gain you any advantage whatsoever. So that's what today's lesson is about, is to uh, show you how to show a shortage in, uh, in a particular suit when you have a trump fit with partner. We're really trying to elevate your bidding to a level uh, uh, where it is such that you can judge more accurately. And hopefully I can show you in the first example that I'm giving you here, uh, I'll go past the, uh, the discussion about what they call the different splinter bids, maxi, mini, et cetera, all of that. We'll come back to that and we'll discuss those all bit by bit as we go along. But first of all, let's look at the example here that I've given you. Example one and example two. This is the most important part of this lesson. Why? Because as you can see, the two examples are almost exactly the same. The only thing that we've changed is the minor suits in the responder's hand. In the minor suits on the top, example one, I'll get a little pointer out here so I can uh, show it to you. Now, with the minor suits in example one, we have a singleton diamond and we have king to four clubs. In example two, the hands, as I said, are exactly the same, except that we've simply switched the two minor suit holdings. We've got king to four in diamonds, and this time the singleton is in the club suit. Now, let's have a look at the two different hands. In example number one, opposite the singleton that you've got here in diamonds, partner holds the ace, which mean, means those two diamonds in partner's hand can easily be trumped in your hand. And once you've lost to the ace of clubs, the combined uh, potential for this hand, for the two hands together, is you would probably easily make six spades. Have a look at example two. Example two, we've got the singleton in the club suit. Now partners holding opposite that singleton is the queen and the jack. Well, that queen and the jack is essentially useless cards. You're going to lose a trick in the suit. And in fact, neither the queen nor the jack will score any tricks. That means that you're going to lose a club trick and you have an inescapable loser in the diamond suit because you're missing queen, jack, 10, six times. So in example two, the two hands combined won't be able to make a slam in uh, spades. So what I'm aiming to do with this lesson is to show you that we can actually pinpoint where that singleton is in our hand when we have a trump fit with partner. Now, there's three different uh, types of what we call splinter bids. There is what we call responders maxi splinter. Now, what is a maxi splinter? A maxi splinter is when you say to partner, 
I've got enough to go to game here, partner. Uh, we're definitely going to game, but let me show you that I've got a shortage in a particular suit, and you see if there's potential for more than game. Now, this could happen whether you were responding to partners opening one a bit of one of a major, or whether you were, you are the opener responding to partners uh, bid of one of a major. That is their response of one of a major. Let's look at uh, one of uh, each of them individually. Category number one. That is responders maxi splinter in response to one of a major. Well, how do you show it? A maxi splinter is a jump shift, but it's a double jump shift, meaning you miss two levels of bidding. So a normal bid in diamonds in response to a one spade bid would be one spade, two diamonds. But here we've skipped, we've missed three diamonds, and we've gone to four diamonds. That is what we call a double jump shift. That says to partner, for example here, if the auction was one diamond, one spade, four diamonds, that would say to partner, partner, I've got a fit with you over here. I've got at least four cards in this suit, in, in the trump suit. I also have a singleton or a void in that suit that I am jumping into. So this would show a singleton or a void in the diamond suit. And I've also got between 10 and 12 high card points. Now, as we've been having lessons on things such as Bergen raises, etc., that a common question I'm asked by people is, do the point ranges include shortages? And my answer to that is no. If I write in the notes or I explain in a lesson HCP, that means high card points. So if we looked at example one and example two here, for example one, then uh, the responding hand would fit one of these uh, responders maxi splinters. Partner opens one spade, and with this hand, how many high card points do you have? Well, there's four in spades, three in hearts, three in clubs, a total of 10 high card points. You also have the required uh, four card support in partner's spade suit, partner's major. Now, that's quite important in, on some hands because that actually uh, shows that your partnership has a combined nine trumps. The double jump into diamonds, as you would, you would make on this hand, that says to partner, partner, I've got a singleton or I've got a void in the diamond suit. Now, with your hand opposite that, you would go, well, that's good news. My ace can take care of your singleton. And what I thought, were losers in the diamond suit, I know now the eight and three of diamonds can be trumped over in your hand. So that would be good news in example one. Have a look at example two. The auction would actually go one spade and responder would on this hand bid four clubs. Now the opener would then look at their hand and go, okay, well, that's not such good news for me because now my queen and my jack of clubs are what we call wasted values. Well, let's discuss that wasted value, those wasted values. And what I've done is I've, I've, uh, I've invented a, what we call a splinter uh, slam formula and a splinter game formula. And that allows us to look at our hand when partner makes one of these splinter bids and use, use an equation, pretty simple equation, and hopefully we can spit out an answer as to whether we should be going further on the hand. So let's first of all go through that idea of wasted values and see what that's all about. Uh, wasted values refers to any king, queen, or jack in a suit where partner has shown a singleton or void. So back here in example two, partner shown a singleton club because they would have responded one spade 
four clubs. And that would say to partner, partner, I've got a singleton or avoiding clubs, assess your hand. Well, you would look at that and you would go, well, the queen and jack of clubs are wasted values. So that would come in under the term of wasted values. If you also had a king in that suit or you had a king and two small cards, the king would also be considered wasted values. If you go up and have a look at example one, partner on that hand showed you a singleton diamond. Having a look at your hand, what are wasted values? Wasted values are any king, queen, or jack in the suit that partner's shown a singleton. Well, do you have any of those? The answer is no. So this heart hand in example one, the opener's hand, is what we would call a perfect hand opposite a splinter because it has no wasted values. Ingy's asked the question, what about king, queen, jack? I'm talking about precisely uh, king, queen, jack in a suit that partner's shown a singleton. Uh, I think I'm getting, I think I'm understanding what you're trying to say is, what if the holding was king, queen, jack together in a suit where you have a singleton? Well, bear in mind, you still have a loser in that suit. You can't miss losing to the ace. So I wouldn't, can, uh, I wouldn't um, put down the king, queen, jack as a good holding opposite a singleton. I would still downgrade it a bit. Now, for the purpose of this lesson, I want you to consider that king, queen, and jack in a side suit or in a suit where partner has splintered is what we would call wasted values. A few hands. So Sally's asking, why didn't we open one no trump on example one, example two? It's 17 high card points with a five card suit. I think that's too good to open one no trump. I think that hand should be opened one spade and treated like a hand with 18 points. That's why I didn't open one no trump on that. Ah, very good question here. Jut has asked a, a question uh, where she said, what if a singleton is an ace? If you ever have a singleton ace or a singleton king, you should never treat that as a singleton. Singleton aces and singleton kings should be treated like doubletons. So if you do happen to be dealt a singleton ace or a singleton king, and you are thinking of splintering, splintering means showing that singleton, then don't do it. Treat the singleton ace or the singleton king like it is a doubleton. Okay, let's continue on and show how we can use this slam uh, the splinter slam formula and pop it into an equation and see how it works. Now, before we talk about the, the splinter slam formula, what I want to say to you is this. Typically, to bid six of a major, if we have two reasonably balanced hands opposite each other, we can often bid and make a slam in a major or any six level with about 32 points. But if you can uh, show a singleton and be able to match where that singleton is, we can often be able to make slam on as little as 26 high card points, provided, or well, that includes no suits with wasted values. So how does that work? Well, Whenever partner does show a splinter suit, what we do is we add our high card points and we take away any king, queen, or jack, and that's what we term wasted values, in the suit that partner has splintered. And then we add on the num average number of high card points that partner has shown. And if it gets to 26 or more, then we should be trying for slam. So, how do we know about the number of points that partner has shown? Let's go back a step and let's go to uh, what partner would show for a responder's maxi splinter. That point range partner shows is about nine to 12. If that's the case, we play partner for an average of 10. So one point more than the minimum that they've promised. Let's go back to that formula, the splinter slam formula. 
And then we've got high card points, your high card points, minus uh, the wasted values. That is any king, queen, or jack that you hold in the suit that partner has splintered. You add the average number of high card points the partner has shown for that splinter bid. And then if you get to 26 or more, you should try for slab. So let's have a look at some examples of how this works. Example three, you've opened the bidding with one spade and your partner has jumped to four diamonds. Now that is a double jump shift. Therefore that is a maxi splinter. Maxi splinters by responder promise nine to 12 points. Uh, Neil's asked the question again, what if the singleton is an ace? Uh, I think you may have heard the response before, Neil, that if a singleton is an ace, you treat it like a doubleton. If a king, if a singleton is a king, you also treat that as a doubleton. So having a look at this hand, let's use the, uh, this, the splinter slam formula. How many high card points do you have? 17. Partner has splintered in diamonds, and you've got the ace of diamonds, but do you have any wasted values in that diamond suit? Do you have any king, queen, or jack? The answer is no. Therefore, you don't subtract any points from your total. You add the average number of points the partner has promised when they make a responder's maxi splinter. We said their range was nine to 12, so we say, I'll play you for 10. Put it all together and we get 27 points. Now, going back to the splinter slam formula, and we say, well, if we've got 26 points between the two hands, we should be trying for slam. So that's what I will do on example three. I would instantly go four no trump and see if partners got two key cards. If they've got two key cards, then I would try for slam. Have a look at example four. A similar hand, the same option, but the holding in the splinter suit, we've changed. We've got 17 points again. Now, what we do is we subtract the amount of wasted values in the suit the partner splintered. Which suit have they splintered in? Diamonds. So they've got a singleton or a void in diamonds. How many high card points do we have in diamonds? Well, there's the king and the jack, and they are what we considered wasted values. If they're wasted values, we subtract those four points from our total. We still add 10 because that's the average number of points the partner's going to have for one of these uh, maxi splinter bids as responder, and we get, it, get to 23. Well, that doesn't reach the 26 that we need to try for a slam. Therefore, we simply stay in game. Okay, let's keep going and let's look at another maxi splinter. And that would be the maxi splinter where it isn't the uh, responder uh, replying to partner's opening bit of a major, but actually the opener responding or replying to responder's bid of one of a major. So for example, you open one heart and partner bids one spade. Now, you're confident of making four spades on this hand. Yeah, it's certainly as far as losers go, you've only got four losers on this hand. So we're very confident game will make. But uh, we're also thinking that perhaps if partner's got the right cards, we might actually be able to make a slam. Now, instead of being the responder, I'm actually the opener here, and partner may have just six points. So my criteria is the same, except I need at least 17 points to be able to make one of these openers maxi splinter bids. And that makes sense because you're opposite a potential six points only. It's different uh, compared to uh, being the responder and making one of these maxi splinter bids. So on this particular hand, we say, okay, I'm gonna tell you partner, we can go to game. I've got four card support for you. And 
I have a singleton in the suit that I'm double jumping into. Well, I didn't bid two diamonds. I didn't bid three diamonds. I double jumped to four diamonds. Now that says to partner, a singleton or a void in the suit bid, diamonds, four cards support for your major. And this time, because I've already opened the bidding, at least 17 high card points. So we could now partner would they would be the player who would use the splinter slam formula. It's always the person opposite the one who makes the splinter bid who uses the formula. Let's keep going. Let's have a look at that in action. Example number six here. The opener starts with one diamond. Responder bids one heart. So far, so good. And the opener has 17 points and a singleton. Yeah, a lot of people would simply jump to four hearts on this hand. But if you do simply jump to game, partner doesn't know if you're basing that bid on just high card points or high card points plus shortage points. And that's what splinters are hoping to achieve, or I'm hoping to achieve for you, is to say to partner, partner, I'm bidding to this level, but I'm also basing it on a singleton in the suit that I'm showing. Well, I've got a maxi hand because I've got 17 points. Therefore, I can make a double jump into the suit where I've got the singleton. I didn't bid two clubs. I didn't bid three clubs. I double jumped to four clubs. And partner says, okay, well, that's interesting. I now know we're not off the ace king of clubs. So partner can make things much easier by simply using the splinter slam formula. How many high card points does responder have? 12, king jack, king jack, queen, queen. There's the 12. How many uh, high card points do you have in the suit that partner made the splinter bid? How many wasted values, I should say? Well, you have the queen in clubs and that's the suit that partner splintered into. So we have two high card points and we, we subtract that from our total, 12 minus two. Now, you have to add that to the average number of points the partner will have when they make one of these splinters. So remember, there's three types of splinters. There is a maxi splinter for responder, a maxi splinter for the opener, which we are using now, and we'll get to this last one, the mini splinter soon. So partner will expect you to have, for the maxi splinter, an average of 18 points. Christine's asking a question, if I'm confused, where three or four cards are required to support. Uh, very important thing to understand here, everyone. Splinter bids must have a minimum of four card support. Uh, Ruth's also asking a question, once you've known to have the 26 points and you can go to slam, should you then use Roman key card or just bid the slam? Uh, you may remember on, in the lesson when we spoke about Roman key card Blackwood, uh, Easley Blackwood invented Blackwood for the sole purpose not to bid good slams, but to avoid bidding bad slams. That is, a bad slam he defined as a slam that was missing two aces. So if you can look at your hand and know that you're not missing two aces, please, by all, you know, by all accounts, go ahead and bid the slam. But you should use Blackwood if you are missing two key cards. Few more questions. What if the responder only has four cards in hearts? That's okay. So I, I actually discuss that a little bit uh, later, Tony, when we talk about uh, what we take into account when our partnership has an eight card fit versus having a nine card fit. With a nine card trump fit, 26 is enough. If you have an eight card trump fit, I write this later on the, in the notes, then increase that total by one or, or you know, one point or two. Still consider um, the play of the hand might be a bit tougher. You might have to be a little bit more careful in the play. But if you're a confident declarer, then up that to about 27 when you have an eight card fit. Um, uh, if you're not such a confident declarer, then maybe you might uh, bring that a little bit higher to about 28 with the eight card fit. Few more questions. Jane's asking, 
Uh, open a splinter, you may only have eight trumps. Yes, okay. And uh, in number four, Ingi is asking, do you deduct four points for the king jack for two? Well, the reason, back to example four here, why did we deduct four points in example four? Any cards that you have, honor cards, king, queen, or jack in a suit where partner shows a singleton, yeah, those cards are what we call wasted values. Ingi, if that king jack of diamonds was the ace, that would be wonderful. But when it's uh, not the ace, then any one of those cards is what we deem to be wasted values. So going back to the example hand that we had. Okay, partners made openers uh, maxi splinter bit of four clubs. So back to the formula, you've got 12 points here as responder, subtract the two points, the wasted values of the queen of clubs, add in partner's average for opener's maxi splinter, which is 18, and we've got to a total of 28. So I think that's good enough to go for slam, and uh, I think we'll go there by using four no trump. Partner bids five clubs showing naught or three, they must hold three. And you say, do you have the queen of hearts partner because we're missing a key card? And partner says, yes, I do. So you comfortably bid four hearts. Now, splinter bids only, aren't only for slam bidding. One of, the, one of the great breakthroughs about splinter bids over the last 15 years or 20 years was that people recognize the value of splinter bids also when it came to uh, finding out if your side could make uh, a game or not. Now, these only occur in one position. Mini splinters only occur by the opener. Now, picture an option. I'll write one down for you. And this is what we mean about uh, opener's mini splinter. If the bidding goes one diamond, one heart, and the opener was to bid three hearts. That would be an invitation to game. Now, what we're suge I'm suggesting with mini splinters is, we're also inv inviting partner to game, but instead of just simply jumping to three of partner's major suit, if you have a singleton and you want to invite game, so your point range is somewhere between about 13 to 16 points, instead of simply, raising partners one of a major to three, I want you to make a single jump shift, not a double, but a single jump shift in, into the suit where you hold the singleton. So if I was to bid three clubs here, that would say to partner, partner, I now have four cards in heart. I've got a singleton or a void in clubs, and I've got about 13 to 16 points. This is actually very useful for partner because they can assess whether they simply sign off in three hearts saying I'm not interested or they can look at their holding in the suit that you're making a splinter and go up to four hearts or even higher if they're interested in slam. So exactly the same theories apply except you can also have one of these splinter game formulas as well as a splinter slam formula. So let's see how that works. With a splinter, mini splinter, this is a perfect example of a mini splinter in action. You open one diamond and your partner responds one spade. Now in high card points, you've got a total of 14. Now that singleton club is very useful. So the singleton club raises your tally if you were to count high card points and shortage points. If that was the method you used, it would take your tally up to about 17. It means that you definitely have a hand that is interested in game, yep, or wants to invite game. Now, if you, in fact, look at the hand a little closely, you'll see that partner won't know if you bid three hearts, whether that's based on a hand with 
five diamonds, four spades, no shortages, and 16 points. But you could compare that to a hand that has, for instance, a singleton. But if you can show partner where that singleton is, then partner is in a much better position to judge whether to bid higher or not. So the single jump shift by the opener says, partner, partner, I've got four card support for you. I've got 13 to 16 points. And this is where I have my singleton or void. So one diamond, one spade, three clubs. And partner then looks at their hand and judges how high should I bid based upon uh, the fact that I now know that you've got a singleton or a void in clubs along with your trump support for me. So how does the, the splinter game formula work? Just before I go into that, Peter's got a question. Uh, ah, so good question. So Peter said, but there's been no agreement of suit. The agreement is implied. Yep. These things are very important uh, to play with a partner. There's no use playing this as long as a partner doesn't understand the same system. But now that you've got, uh, we all seem to have a bit more time to be able to look at um, uh, conventions such as this, then why not discuss it with your favorite partner and say, shall we try to play uh, these three different types of splinters? Yep. And uh, the splinter is implied. So once the jump happens, Peter, then the trump fit is implied. So once I jump shift into a different suit, partner is to presume that I have already trump support for them. James asks, so do you lose the option of a minor suit reverse? Well, no, you don't. Because most of the time, changes of suit are forcing. So... You have the odd hand, and it's, I would never ever play uh, the jump shift, even if it was natural. I would never do it on as little as 16 points. I would have needed to have a 19 point hand anyhow. So to use the term reverse is not right. Uh, reverse really implies 16 points. And even if I was teaching purely natural bidding, I would never ever a jump shift on 16, as little as 16 points. Good, few good questions here. Neil's asking, how do, do we not confuse this with a Bergen raise? Bergen raises are always, and have a close look at this, Bergen raise are always Sponder's bid. Here, and that's a single jump, the single jump is the opener's bid. So that's the clear distinction and why you won't confuse them. One is by Responder, one is by Opener. Robin's asking, are these bids alertable? Absolutely, 100% alertable. Even though jump shifts or, or jumps are deemed to be self-alerting, I would always err on the side of caution when it comes to alerting the opponents. Now, how does the splinter game formula work? Well, instead of needing the 25 or 26 points per game, we take our, um, our uh, tally down to 21 after uh, we look at um, uh, the uh, formula here. Now, this, it doesn't have to be nine card trump fit. You could do this on an eight card trump fit, everyone. So that should read eight or nine card trump fit. Subtract any king, queen, or jack in the splintered suit, the same formula. And here's an example. Partner opens one club and you respond one heart. You've got seven points. Partner makes a mini splinter bid of three diamonds. So that's a single jump. Uh, partner has shown us between 13 and 16 points and a singleton or a void in diamonds. Well, let's try the, the splinter game formula. How many points do you have? Seven. Subtract any king, queen, or jack in the splintered suit. Do you have any? The answer is no. Good news. Add in the average number of, of points the partner will have. Well, their point range is 13 to 16. So we play them for one point more than that, 14, and we get to 21. This hand, believe it or not, opposite a potential 13 to 16 points, you should definitely bid game. Okay. Now, I've got some hands set up for, for us all here. So let's um, change the 
to share here and put a new share up. Pop up our Yeah, you can all see that. Ron is asking a question. Why was the King of Diamonds an example for worthless? Okay, example uh, four, here we are. Well, in order to understand this lesson, Rhonda, what I really need for people to focus on is what is a good holding opposite a singleton in, for, in partner's hand? That is, if we have a trump fit in spades, the partner's shown you a singleton diamond, the ace is good opposite the singleton diamond. But the king, however, is almost what we would call a wasted, a wasted honor or wasted values. Why? Because you're still going to lose the first round of the suit. That's why the queen is not, is, um, not uh, valuable. In example six, you ask, why is the queen of clubs? Uh, uh, the queen of clubs example, no, the queen of clubs is not useful in example six. That's the two points we've suggested that you take away. So subtract two. Okay, let's move on to the example hands we've got here. Now, uh, this is your hand, you pick it up, similar to the uh, example uh, one that I gave you early in the notes, and too good for one no trump, so you open one spade. Partner makes a double jump response. So responders, maxi, splinter. What does that promise? It promises a singleton or a void in the suit bid, that is diamonds, and it promises between nine and 12 points. But importantly, everyone, four card support for your suit. So there we go, four plus spades, zero or one diamonds, nine to 12 high card points. <clears throat> now let's use the slam formula, the splinter slam formula. We'll pop it up here. And what have we got here for the opener? So we've got how many in high card points? 17, yep. We subtract how many high card points or wasted values we have in partner's splintered suit. Well, do we have any king, queen, jack of diamonds? No, we don't. Uh, so we subtract uh, no high card points here. We then add in how many high card points partner has on average. Well, their bid shows nine to 12. So we'll play them for one point more than the minimum, 10. And we get to a total, if I can keep this on the screen, of 27. What did we say was enough to explore slam? 26. Therefore, we'll simply use four no trump now, Roman key card Blackwood. Partner shows two key cards plus the queen of trumps. That's four steps. Zero, one, two without, two with. So how many high, uh, uh, key cards do we have total? One, two, and partner's got two. So that's four in total plus the queen, which means we can bid to the sixth level. Before we play the hand, Pam's asking question, are splinters off with interference? The answer to that, Pam, is that if the opponents intervene at the two level, then uh, you can only splinter in their suit. If the opponents intervene at the one level, then you can still splinter in any suit. So if the option was one heart, one spade overcall, splinters are on. One heart double, one spade double, but one of a major two uh, level overcall, splinters are off. Okay, let's try the play of this hand. The opponents lead the 10 of diamonds. It's a pretty negative lead from the opponents, but let's uh, follow the line of play. Well, we've got, we could trump two diamonds in dummy, and that would bring our, to our tally up to five trump tricks in hand. The ace of diamonds and two trumps in dummy, that's eight. And then the ace, king, queen of clubs, that's 11. Now, this club suit probably needs to come home for us to be able to build up our tally of tricks here, doesn't it? So um, I think one of the worst things we could do here is we could, 
we could trump diamonds and dummy too early. I think we might need those extra trumps and dummy in case the clubs don't break. So I'm going to win the first trick with the ace, but I'm not going to trump a diamond here. I'm going to leave that for later on, and I'm going to explore what's happening in the trump suit. So I'm going to play a trump to the king. Both follow. Now trump back to my hand. Ah, everyone follows. Well, that's great news. Now, that means I've got two extra trumps in dummy, and I can use those two extra trumps for entries. Now, that could be very important because if the club suit doesn't break, I need to be able to rough a club in my hand and then get back to dummy to enjoy it. So that's what I'm going to do next. If the clubs break 3-2, uh, then we've got 13 tricks. But if they don't, well, there's one that both followed. Well, they don't, which is important. Now I'm very glad that I didn't start trumping uh, diamonds early. I play the third trump across to the ace. And now I need to set up, there's one club out against me. So I need to set up that extra club by trumping a club in my hand. And you can see what will happen is I can trump these two losing diamonds in dummy, and then one of the hearts can run away on the long club. And it means I don't have to lead a heart towards the king for my 12th trick. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna trump a club in my hand, cross over to dummy by now trumping a diamond, and be grateful that I didn't draw any uh, trump any diamonds early. And now I play my fifth club, throwing away my heart, and then I simply give up a trick to the ace of hearts, trumping the last diamond and double. Now have a look at the hand as a whole. I hope everyone can see that it might be a little bit light on the screen. Go to rewind. Sorry, everyone. I don't know how to do that through the play and pop the whole hand on the board. Here we go. So if we look at this hand, if we had trumped diamonds early, you wouldn't have had the entries to trump the fifth club, make the fifth club high, and you would have led a heart towards the king, and that would have lost to the ace. It would have lost two heart tricks. So it was important to make sure that you use your entries. So hopefully you understand uh, the uh, steps in that hand. One was the value of the splinter bid. Two was how to use the splinter slam formula. And three was making sure that once we got to slam, that we played it the right way. Let's keep going. Another one of these maxi splinters by Responder. So partner has not bid two clubs, they've not bid three clubs. Now that, answering your question earlier, Neil, three clubs, that is a Bergen raise because that's by Responder. So this here is a double jump by responder, which is a, a splinter bid and a maxi splinter, for that matter, by responder. Promising a singleton or avoiding clubs, how many points? Nine to 12, and also four card support for your major. So that's what partner's shown. Well, this looks good because now if we use the splinter slam formula, and this goes back to a question I was asked earlier, should we just simply jump the slam? Well, the splinter slam formula says probably you should. Well, let's try it. So what have we got here with our splinter slam formula? Uh, with our splinter slam formula, we've got uh, 17 in high card points here. Partners splintered in clubs. Do we have any, any uh, club honours? Well, we don't. Uh, meaning that are wasted. There's no king, queen, or jack. So we don't subtract anything from our total. We keep it at 17. Partners promise 9 to 12, so we play them for one above the average, which is 10, and that takes us to 27. Well, 26 was the minimum with a nine-card trump fit. Therefore, it looks like slam is a good shot. But I'm concerned about this diamond suit. What if partner turns out to have no ace or king in diamonds? 
So this is something that I'm looking that will improve with our slam bidding as we go along in, in, with our webinars. And that is the area of being able to show a control in the suit. So any bid between three of a suit or three of a major most especially, and four of a major, if you make a bid between those two bids, that is in this instance, three spades and four spades, they, it says to partner, partner, I have a control in this suit. A control is the ace, a king, a singleton, or a void. So if there's a particular suit where you're missing that and you have the space to explore, then it's probably a good idea to do exactly that. Well, I'm worried about diamonds, so I'm going to skip over diamonds and bid four hearts showing first or second round control in hearts and denying first or second round control in diamonds. And that will send that message to partner. Partner will look at their diamond holding and they don't have first or second round control in diamonds either. They have no ace, king, singleton or void. So they would simply sign off in spades saying, no diamond control partner. Sorry, better luck next time. Pity because we had the values to play a game. So this hand, we won't spend much time on the play because it's not needed. The opponents are going to lead out the ace and the king of diamonds. Now, just show you something. And this might be important to tomorrow's lesson because we're gonna talk about a specific area of defense and that is the area of signaling partner. Signaling partner meaning telling your partner whether you like their lead or not, We'll also cover the area of uh, discarding, telling partner, uh, please play this suit next time you're in, or whatever you do, don't play this suit next time you're in. And then we're also going to look at the area of, of what we call count cards, that is finding out whether partner's got an even or an odd number of cards. Because that can be very relevant to signaling on the opening trick. And here's an example. Let's say for uh, East is playing uh, reverse count. Sorry, not reverse count, low encourage. On the first lead, that's previous. Partners led the ace of diamonds, promising the king, no doubt. Dummy plays low. If you played low encourage, if you had the nine and the three only, you would follow with the three, saying, partner, I like this seat, suit, keep going. Because you don't have any reason to encourage partner to keep playing the suit, then you need to pass that message over to partner by playing a high card here, saying, partner, I hate, I don't like this suit. So that's why East's card should be the nine of diamonds. I don't like it. Yep. Partner is going to plow on anyhow because it's the only option and he knows that partner South has a doubleton diamond. So they cash the two tricks. Now, if you had a doubleton here, then West might, would be able to give you a rough. But as it turns out, the doubleton is in the South hand. So South wins the cart, draws trumps, and then claims the rest of the tricks. But we're lucky we didn't go to slam here because our shortages didn't match. Two more hands to go. Here we are. So this time we're going to turn it around. So instead of looking at responders splinters, we're going to look at the one uh, 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 mini splinter that we have. And that one mini splinter, and the mini splinter is a bid showing a singleton or void, but simply looking for game, that mini splinter can only be done by the opener. Opener starts off by uh, bidding, sorry, I can't see the screen very well here, by opening the bidding with one diamond. There we go. South responds one heart. And this is a classic mini splinter hand. You have 13 points. You're definitely going to raise the heart suit. But if you added a singleton, you could say, well, that's worth 16. Therefore, I'm worthy of bidding three hearts. 
And up till now, a lot of people would play exactly that way. They would simply bid three hearts on the hand. But how does partner know whether you've got a balanced hand with 16 points or a semi-balanced hand? Yeah, five, four, two, two. How do they know whether you've got that or whether you're basing your three heart bid on a singleton? Well, how about we tell partner what it is? So we're saying to partner, I want to invite you to the three level. I've got, we've got between, I've got between 13 and 16 points, but let's be accurate. And I'll tell you that I've got a zero or one card in clubs. I've got four card support for you from 13 to 16 points. And partner then can use the splinter game formula. Well, the splinter game formula means we have to use the same formula, but we need to get to at least 21 to be able to uh, bid game. Well, let's go through the equation. Two plus six plus one is nine. Partners splintered in clubs. How many wasted values do you have in clubs? Nothing. No king, queen or jack. So you subtract nothing from your nine points. Partners promised you 13 to 16, so we play them for one more than the minimum. 14, 14 plus your nine is 23. So with this hand, you should go to game. Now you're probably thinking, well, you know, the same thing would have applied. We would have bid game had partner bid three hearts. You would have gone to four hearts on this hand. Why am I playing this method? Well, I'll tell you why, because the next time, partner will splinter in spades, yeah? And suddenly your queen of spades is a wasted card. And you'll find if you put the two hands together, then if the black suits were swapped between on south, then you wouldn't make four hearts. So I'm really trying to get you to focus on making your bidding uh, a little bit more accurate rather than just uh, sometimes uh, guessing on hands. Okay, the opponents lead the jack of spades. Now, that means that when they've led the jack, they've got 10, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to duck and dummy and see what East does. We duck, East ducks, encouraging, saying the encouraging to, saying I like it, partner, and you win the queen. Well, the spade suit could prove a problem for you here, but I think it might be a good idea to, whilst you're in hand, to take that diamond finesse. And if it loses to the king, you can always discard one of your spade losers on the ace queen of diamonds. So that's what we're gonna try next. We're gonna try the jack of diamonds and it loses to the king. It's okay. West East now plays a club to put partner on lead, why? To play another spade. But West, or well, the actual hand is the, the, the situation in the spade suit is what we call frozen. West has the 10 of spades. If they play it, then declarer will simply cover with the king and the nine will become high. If they don't play the suit, then declarer will play a diamond to the ace and the queen and throw a spade away. So West is uh, between a rock and a hard place here, but they hope that their partner's got the nine with their ace, so they continue on with the 10. Now the Clara comfortably covers, East wins the ace, plays a hopeful third round of the suit, but you score your nine. And now uh, there's tricks everywhere, so if you can afford to draw trumps. Draw all the trumps out. And enjoy the rest of the tricks. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't touch, touch trumps early. Notice trumps are 3-1. If I played trumps early, I would have drawn out three of dummies, four hearts. And then I led a diamond. Yeah, I might have led a diamond there. And uh, East might have won and taken dummy's last trump out. Now, I would have had an issue, or could have had an issue with the spade suit at that point in time, and I wouldn't have been able to trump both of my clubs. 
So that's why I decline to draw trumps immediately on that hand. Okay, last hand. Here we go. Well, this is exciting. And this uh, goes back to a question that Tony asked earlier about eight card trump fits. Now let's try to um, uh, confront what, what's the difference between an eight card trump fit and a nine card trump fit with these mini splinters. Partner opens a heart, you respond to spade, and partner makes a mini splinter, single jump for three diamonds, saying, I wanted to bid three spades, yep, but I've got specifically a singleton or a void in diamonds. You judge accurately. My point range is between 13 and 16. I was probably um, uh, making this bid based upon uh, uh, the fact that I've got a singleton, meaning I would have bid three spades because my tally got up that high due to the singleton. Well, now I can show you where the singleton is and hopefully make our bidding a bit more accurate. So that's what Three Diamonds says. Openers, mini, splinter. Four spades, zero, one diamond, 13 to 16 points. Well, let's use the, uh, this hand looks like a slam possibility, doesn't it? Uh, let's use the slam, the splinter slam formula. And uh, how many high card points do we have? 10, 15. Subtract any king, queen, or jack in the splintered suit. Which is the splintered suit? Sorry, pardon me, I'll just remove that uh, description. So let's have a look at the, uh, let's have a look at the uh, south hand here. We've got um, 15 high card points. We subtract any king, queen, or jack in the splintered suit. Well, there's a jack of diamonds because that's the splintered suit, diamonds. So we're down to 14. We add on partner's average. Well, partner promised you how many points? Between 13 and 16. So we play them one, for one point more than the minimum, 14. So 14 plus 14 is 28. Well, 26 would have been enough had we had a nine card trump fit. So we've got an eight card trump fit and we're now at 28. I think that's about right. 20, you might have convinced me with 27, but 28 seems pretty good to me. So that's why I bid four no trump, checking on uh, key cards. Partner shows two key cards, no queen. So we bid slam. Let's look at the play. They lead the ace of spades. Oh boy, they're after me. So West has led a spade, a trump. Why did they do that? I reckon they did that probably because they had good diamonds and they could see that dummy might start trumping diamonds and they want to take out as many trumps as they can just in case I might have had four of them for instance. But I reckon that if we can take uh, maybe six trump tricks, the ace and the king of clubs, six trump tricks, why? Because we could trump two diamonds and dummy. The ace and the king of clubs is eight, and the ace, king, queen of hearts is 11, plus we might be able to set up the fifth heart. Or if that doesn't work, perhaps the club finesse might work on this hand. So that's our plan. Win the spade, void dummy and diamonds. They'll probably play another trump, win that, trump a diamond, heart to the king, trump a diamond, club to the ace, draw the trumps, then test the hearts. So that's how you think on hands like this, everyone. You know, take it bit by bit. Take it um, first three tricks. Then if you can do that, perhaps the first four tricks. And if you can get further into a hand, you'll have a better picture um, whenever you are declaring. So we play low and dummy. We win it. Now, two of the opponent's trumps have gone, but we're going to void dummy and diamonds because we need to trump two of those diamonds. So we've done that. They continue with the trump play. So two more. There's one trump left out against us. So we're going to trump a diamond and dummy. Cross back to the king of hearts. Trump our last diamond in dummy with the last trump. 
and then come back to the ace of clubs, leaving the king in dummy. Draw the last trump from the opponents, throwing a club, not a heart, everyone, throwing a club, because I'm going to play for hearts to be no worse than 4-2. Then I play the six of hearts to the ace. 4-2 hearts is a much better odd than the club finesse. Well, they are going to be no worse than 4-2. Take the ace, throwing a club, trump. A heart making the eight of hearts into a winner, then cross to dummy with the club, and the eight of hearts becomes our 12th trick, making slam. Okay, everyone, there's quite a bit in that lesson, but try and break it down. Try and break it down bit by bit. Learn the value, go back to example one and two, and convince yourself that uh, a singleton in the right location can be very beneficial. And then take it bit by bit. Then look at things like respond as maxi splinter, have a look at open as maxi splinter, and then have a look at finally the mini splinters. And I think the most important thing, there is quite a bit, there is a bit, but at the same time, you also have formulas everywhere. You're given formulas um, when it comes to even counting high card points and shortage points. So another little bit of a formula here might be a good, and people like formulas. They like to know how do I approach this hand and how do I count my hand more accurately. So uh, quite a bit, and that will be a great uh, lesson to revise down the track as well. Everyone, I'm going to keep the microphones open because I think there's going to be a lot of questions. Um, uh, and uh, tomorrow, remember, it's a very focused lesson on defensive signals. Everyone, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll keep the microphones open.